All right, I'll call this uh, regular meeting of council to order for December the 7th, 2021. Councillor Delorier uh, will be here shortly. He's uh, just running a little bit late, and Councillor uh, Bobbick is not attending tonight. <clears throat> Result of the agenda for the December 7th, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the November 16, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor uh, Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, moving on to receptions and delegations of the hearing, 4.1. Result the, re the regular meeting of council be suspended and further that the public hearing for conditional use to 2021 be called to order at 7.31 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so we have a um, an application for conditional use, as you can see in your package, um, CEO Pool. Yeah, the conditional use is to allow a modular home onto the residential property. <clears throat> if you open up the, the 411 George Avenue public hearing notice, uh, there is a map attached. Any, is, are, there, are there any questions? Any questions, Councillor Morio? A uh, couple of questions. Uh, for clarification on modular home without having to go back to the building. Uh, is it like going to be on a foundation or is that like a, a mobile home that sits on blocks? Modular home means a prefabricated portable dwelling unit similar to but distinct from mobile home. And then a modular home does not have a chassis designed to accommodate wheels. Modular homes are designed to be transported to a site on a flatbed truck and may be folded, collapsed, or telescoped to well in tow, which may be extended on the site for additional interior space. Modular homes are distinct from ready-to-move dwellings in that they are not designed or constructed to the same building code requirements. Okay, so like, it's, so like a, it's like an RTM going on a foundation versus still being mobile with wheels and stuff like that. Yeah, like a, an RTM is designed just like a normal house, a uh, modular home is more like one that's designed to be transported and then you know could be transported again kind of thing relatively easily but it doesn't have the chassis underneath it that a uh, mobile home does. And is, is that a, a vacant lot right now or is there another home on there? So you're proposing to put two homes on one lot? I believe it's a, <coughs> a vacant one. Uh, the one to the south has a house on it. Like 413. I thought it was a, I thought it was 411 a, uh, doesn't. There's I thought there was a house on that lot. Yeah, there's a legal variation that separates them. Oh, oh okay, I see it. Yeah, I see four, it there too. You can yeah. see 413 on yeah. the map and 411 would be yeah. to the north of yeah. that dash legal variation line. Thank and you. Then, and then last question, do we have any other variations for modular homes within the town? Uh, conditional use. Okay. Conditional uses are required for modular homes everywhere except for in the residential uh, in the trailer park. Her, yeah, residential mobile home zones. So like they're just a conditional use for any other residential zone so that council gets a chance to look at and people around get a chance to uh, respond. But do we have any other ones? Like I couldn't say home? historically, I'd have to check that. Anything further? I think these have been kind of popping up all over the, the place in the United States and in Canada as well for a number of years. 
Any further discussion? Okay. Result of this public hearing for conditional use two, 2021 be closed and further the regular meeting of council be resumed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving on, 6, 6.1. Result of the RCMP July to September 2021 invoice package dated November the 17th, 2021 be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2. Result of the letter did, dated November the 16th, 2021, from Multi Material Stewardship Manitoba regarding the in kind advertising program be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by <coughs> Councilor Morio. Discussion? No discussion. Um, Mr. Poole, does this mean that the, the, uh, the print here in Swan River is providing a credit, or is this credit actually coming from this organization? It's, it's not detailed. It's, it's a vague proposal from MMSM uh, to operate, uh, I guess not operate, but provide residential recycling services. They want to continue the agreements with, uh, between municipalities and their contractors for the residential recycling, but they believe uh, they believe that they can basically take take over the residential recycling for municipalities in Manitoba, but it's it's very grassroots. Uh, we do expect them to to have some correspondence with us on exactly how they want to uh, roll out this plan. So we're yeah we're we're very curious on how exactly they think they're going to do this, but. Uh, in, in terms of details, I can't say. Okay. Well, I'm curious to see how that pans out then. Yeah. Any further discussion? Go. So this is just some information. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7, 7.1. Resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by... Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? The report is there for you to browse. Any discussion? None? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the November Protective Services report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Friesen. Thank you for the pickup at 1462 Third Street. It was a lift assist and the guys were great. Perfect, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 722, result of the November 2021 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3. Uh, CEO, sorry, Council and CAO report. I'll start with Councillor Friesen. Um, I wrote it down so I don't forget. I attended the uh, 
some of the other foundation grant presentations and uh, received a grant for Parks and Recreation to uh, partner with the Manitoba 150 money to put in the skating oval down at the Legion Park. Um, I think it's going to be a great thing. It'll be for skating. Um, the outdoor rink at the arena will be for sticks and pucks. And this will give uh, another ice surface for kids <coughs> to just go skating. So that was very good. I also ended up uh, <clears throat> as um, on the board of the museum. There was nobody else there. So I got to collect four grants for the museum. And they're just a uh, constant. So I um, was glad to get that too. I also want to mention the Communities of Care toy drive. Um, this weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, the uh, Stampeder Hockey Game is hosting a uh, donation box. If you want to take a uh, take a toy for a child or make a donation, and if you do, you're entered to win an autographed Stampeder jersey. So that's this Friday and Saturday at the arena. Also on December the 11th, there's a Phil Santa's sleigh with toys for children at Red Apple. And that is happening from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon. So if you feel like making a good donation there or a toy, feel free to do that. And next, uh, what's the 9th? Is that Thursday? Yep is the opening of uh, Mistletoe Magic at the museum. Nice. And um, we're not having a grand opening as such because we don't want hordes and hordes of people the first night, but it's just going to be uh, the first night we turn on the lights. And they will be on from six till nine every evening until January 8th. So you'll have lots of time to drive around or walk around and see all the lights. And that's everything for me. Perfect. Well, thank you. Uh, Dipper Mayor Wendoni. Yes, sir. You're next. Oh. Um, I've got a few things on my list. The first one at the top of my list is I want to thank uh, Mr. Harvey for attending the COPP meeting that uh, was had a few weeks ago, last week, days ago. I don't even remember anymore. Um, but thank you for being there, Mr. Harvey, and, and helping us through some issues that we were facing with the town in terms of lighting and that sort of thing and providing some insight with that. So thank you for that. Uh, and just a little bit of an update with that. The COPP does have 22 members on the ground right now um, traveling around and serving our community. So um, top of the hats to, to them along with our community members as well, businesses um, and individuals who have contributed um, flashlights and um, gas cards and things like that towards the program. It's muchly appreciative, appreciated by the uh, members of the group. So thank you to everyone out there and, and know that uh, the COPP, COPP program is working hard. Um, one thing that uh, I do have a little bit of concern with and that I've, we've been hearing is things about fireworks um, and then about the, with the bylaw with fireworks in, a, in the community. So perhaps at a cow meeting we can review the fireworks bylaw um, and, and see what that looks like. I think enforcement will be the number one issue with that and I think that that's what the public is more concerned about. Um, we do have an airport commission meeting tomorrow um, in which there'll be more details out of that meeting as we, or from that meeting as that wraps up tomorrow. Um, and <coughs> thank you to all of administration who have been dealing with uh, issues that have been um, I guess directed to me and then who would, that have been directed to administration. So thank you all for addressing the issues that do come up and, and handling them. Um, those individuals who did bring issues forward and did have resolutions and are very pleased with, with how um, 
everyone from the office um, has handled those. So thank you to, to uh, your office team, Mr. Poole. Um, just a concern as well in terms of sidewalks and streets and myself and Mr. Harvey had that conversation um, with uh, our, our uh, gravel unit being down for a little bit. So um, to the public, just to be patient, we are working on it and uh, Mr. Harvey and his team reassures us that we'll be back in business before too long. So be careful out there, be patient, but we are doing what we can to get there. So thank you, Mr. Harvey. That's all I have. Okay. I believe that the sanding unit has been out for some time. Um, Darren, do you want to leave? Uh, I was just going to, maybe I'll come back for the union thing. I'll yeah. just take off yeah. now. You do that. I'll just be in my office. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Councilor Morio. Uh, not a whole lot for me since I was away for the majority of the last two weeks, but uh, um, I was unfortunately I was unable to attend the formal part of the AMM conference in Winnipeg. But the evening before I left, I had the opportunity to network with some fellow councillors and some AMM staff and uh, board of directors of that. So that was a, a good evening there where we strengthened our linkages with them. Um, and for the last two days, uh, I'll re we'll report in, in camera regarding our progress on union negotiations uh, for that. So Good, so. thank you. All right, uh, Councillor White. You're muted. Councillor White, we can't hear you. I have a bunch of grandchildren running around the background, so I uh, shut this sound off. Uh, November 17th, uh, PMH match, and uh, if there are two priorities uh, from that entity, the, uh, the flu shot, which is uh, something we should consider, obviously voluntary, and that third uh, third vax apparently is something we should consider also. On the 18th, I went to the Elmer Charter Friendship Center annual general meeting, which was so exciting for me. I just have a few of the things that they do, which I'd like to share with that uh, particular entity does. They provide hampers for the needy, homes for the homeless. They have something like 450 houses that they manage, education programs, 55 job search they're hoping to have providing next year. They have 25 now. They celebrated and coordinated the National Indigenous Day. They're spending somewhere in the area with grant money, <clears throat> excuse me, $1.5 million. More construction to come. Construction starts uh, in the building itself. They have over 600 courses they provide to the community. 21 summer students, meals sent out to community members every week. Partners in ECHO, a vaccination site. They're creating jobs, creating jobs and helping people. Uh, they partner with the uh, Toronto Valley School Division to name a few things. So uh, it's a fantastic uh, organization over there. They certainly do a lot of other things for our community. So it's, uh, I brought greetings from the town at that time too, I might add. Uh, the 19th to 23rd, we went to the AMM, and uh, there's two things that struck my, my attention, was that the RCMP and we shared with them, the D Division uh, management staff, that we were concerned about the schedule, hoping they could get somebody in from three to seven, that they seemed to support that idea at the time. And the cybersecurity, which not only applies to businesses and corporations, but it applies to all of us. For those of us like myself who don't have uh, data, relying on everybody else's Wi-Fi in, in different communities and the restaurants, etc., is probably dangerous to say the least. Then on the 30th, I met with uh, Dr. Michael to talk about the CT scan. He shared with me a story where they had uh, two people that were in, in uh, they weren't well, and they had one ambulance because the other ambulances were out, so they had a triage and pick between the two people and, and uh, it was very difficult for the medical people to make that decision so they chose one and one had to stay back i'm not sure what happened but it wasn't very positive sounding so all the more reason we have to move forward with that ct scan he went the next and day. uh sorry he went the next day pardon me he went the next day the one that got left behind he did what okay Carry on. What? What? Uh, uh, so, what the, uh, Dr. M, Dr. Michael told me is, as we can, as we all know, but I want the public to hear that again. 
we don't have the CT scan, we don't get the surges, we don't get the anesthesis. And I had a meeting with uh, our MLA, Mr. Wojcik, the other day. He's cautiously optimistic something is a wind. I know executive members of PMH are suggesting it's something they have in fact asked for. On December the 1st, we went to Elton Charter our principal at Housing Corporation AGM. Uh, and again, they came out, we're here to serve as I mentioned, they managed 450 houses. And on the 7th, uh, led by your worship uh, and myself and two nurses, we met to discuss the incentive programs that are offered at the moment. They now, I think it's fair to say publicly, we're going to offer some small stipends to bachelor of nursing graduates and uh, LPNs who signed up with the Swan Valley Health System. Once they're here working, then those monies will become available for them. And it became apparent, I think the number they shared with us today, there were 22 uh, healthcare age short in the Swan River Valley right now. That's a real concern of mine because that those people worked in all sorts of entities, but in the personal care homes, our older generation uh, needs some help there. So uh, I'm cautiously optimistic the you know, foundation and or the uh, medical recruiting team will look at something we can do to help there. So it's been a busy couple of weeks as usual, but uh, very rewarding, lots of good things happening. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. For myself, um, I also was able to attend the Community of uh, community Foundation of Swan Valley uh, last week in their presentation of uh, grants and so forth. Um, it's interesting to uh, uh, going through their financials that in uh, between July 1st and June 30th, 2021, uh, 20 to 2021, they raised 386838 I guess, in donations. Um, the total value of our foundation of the valley is now at $4.2 million, which is outstanding. In 2021, they paid out $129,835 in grants, uh, in um, scholarships, and so forth to worthwhile individ to individuals and worthwhile organizations in the whole Swan River Valley. So we really do um, benefit. And since uh, 2005, when they were created, they have given out more than a million dollars in, in those grants and scholarships. So very valuable uh, entity that we have, and it will keep continually to grow and benefit everybody uh, in the Swan Valley. And like Councillor Friesen said that even the town of Swan River was the recipient of one of those grants and uh, that will pave the way or ice the way I guess we can say for a skating oval to return back in our parks and uh, you know good on uh, our parks people Mr. Fedorchuk and also with uh, uh, Lana of course uh, applying for these grants without them uh, we would not be able to have this in the park so I'm looking forward to having it down there and I'll, I'll be skating down there with my kids my kids are pretty excited about uh, it's going to be down there so again <coughs> congratulations to our foundation and, and thank you for all the work that they they do as mentioned uh, we were attending the annual convention AMM convention uh, a few weeks ago a uh, little bit different uh, but still very valuable to attend uh, we did get a chance to speak with the RCMP uh, again that was mentioned uh, earlier and um, uh, many points are raised. I have to thank Mr. Poole for uh, organizing uh, our keeping us organized with this here booklet and also providing uh, advanced information to uh, to the ministers and the, the RCMP or whoever we were meeting uh, to so that they knew what we were talking about in advance. So it's very uh, uh, important information for us to have to keep us organized, but also uh, for our, the people that we're meeting with to uh, know what we're gonna be talking about. So we're not, we're staying to the points and, and, and uh, bringing up the important items that we wanna bring up. So I, again, I wanna thank you for doing that. It's a lot of work. Um, and of course, we get to meet with the executive uh, director and some of the other people there. Uh, good to have those uh, levels of communication open, as Councillor Morio said those links, I like that word, and uh, definitely is something that we have grown over a number of years and uh, it will benefit us uh, as, as we uh, move on. 
uh, mentioned about uh, cyber security. Councillor White had brought that up. And if people don't know what that is, you should go and Google it because it's kind of a scary thing to, to think about if you're not paying attention to it. And there's a lot of things that are happening from so the little micro things, from gift card things to right to uh, tampering into organizations, uh, computer systems, uh, databases, and even municipalities are vulnerable to this and where they hold these individuals and organizations ransom and it costs them millions and millions of dollars per year. It's scary and people need to make sure that they pay attention to what this is because this is a growing uh, level of, of uh, crime and uh, we need to do what we can to protect ourselves and our organizations. As uh, Councillor White mentioned, nurse recruitment. We've been, we, we've, for a number of years, had doctor recruitment, incentive and return to service and so forth, and now we've moved towards, um, with the, uh, the recruitment fund that we have, medical recruitment funds, that we are now going to be offering a return to service agreements to entice individuals to come to Swan River as LPNs and BNs, which we desperately need. Councillor White mentioned that there's a shortage in our whole organizations in the Swan Valley uh, alone is approximately about 22 people. So uh, that's, a, that's an astounding number. I was really shocked to hear that. So we're happy to say that we're moving on with this and, and this is something that we're going to be working on in the next six months really hard. There's some graduates, uh, students coming out of graduation here in the next little bit. So uh, we, there's already been some here in Swan Valley and, and uh, we'll get a chance to speak with them and, and entice and hopefully they can uh, move to Swan River and, and take on this, uh, this uh, offer from us. Um, as we move into Christmas, like in all years, and it doesn't matter only at Christmas time, but through the whole year, there's a lot of different initiatives that are going on around our valley, and anything from gift drives, uh, donating a gift. I know the fire department is doing one currently right now. I uh, encourage you to make a donation. Uh, also, we have food drives going on right now. Our food bank is taking in uh, either, you know, if it's monetary or food to offer <coughs> for those who are needing in that, and also uh, donations for our hamper programs as well. So all those things kind of tie things together and uh, um, hopefully you can take the time to make a donation or help out those needy organizations. And then lastly on the foundation, they are taking their current app, uh, their current uh, donations or, or yeah, donations uh, till December the 31st. There's a special there that they have so you can check with the foundation on that kind of information. Council White. I mean, Friesen, you're sitting in his chair. <clears throat> um, Darren Fedorchuk, I did not mention you. Um, the fire hall on November the 27th had uh, stuff a police cruiser full of toys, and it was held at the fire hall. And I just want to thank you for uh, your volunteer efforts. Very much appreciated. Well, it was our pleasure. Yes, thank you. And uh, since I have you on, on the mic right now, um, the, the date when the gift drive is done, you said the date uh, was ending exactly, can you say? December 17th, I believe it is. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay, awesome, great work. Okay, that's it for council. Anything from CEO Poole? Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the, as council knows, the strap plan is ready. I'm just waiting for an updated picture of council. So uh, maybe at the next meeting, wear something nice, and we can get that picture done for the unveiling in the new year. We all wear something nice our, all the time, don't we? Our <laughs> <strap plan. laughs> uh, and also, stay tuned for uh, committee appointments. They'll be shaken up a little bit, but uh, we will send out uh, your new committee appointments. And just a few things we're working on, as Councillor Morio said, the collective bargaining, uh, researching and, and going through a vaccine uh, policy, which we'll see later on tonight. Uh, just a reminder for our ministers' meetings, uh, justice tomorrow at 1.30 and the infrastructure on Friday at 10 a.m. 
So we will have those meetings uh, this week. And managers will be meeting uh, over budget tomorrow, but hopefully we have a date to present to council coming soon. Uh, the, just getting ready, preparing for the airport meeting tomorrow uh, to announce the, the new operators of the air, not new, but continued operators of the airport if they approve it. And submitting the EMO plan if approved tonight to, to EMO as provincial regulations. And just so council knows, uh, a lot of positive remarks from the employees on our employee recognition. Awesome. Yeah. It's a good idea. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any questions to Mr. Poole on any of those? Okay. Then we'll carry on. Eight, eight point one, result, uh, resolve the chief administrative officer be authorized to sign the video service contract with Mountain Dweller Media as per Schedule A. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion. All in favor. Opposed. It's carried. 8.2, result the Town of Swan River support the Swan Valley Snowmobile Club and the North Mountain Rider Snowmobile Club by way of advertisement in each of their local maps at a cost no more than $150 plus applicable taxes each. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I don't know if you're uh, voting, Councilor White. I haven't seen your thumb or your hand, so. Okay, uh, 8.3. How come I'm missing it there? I'll just refresh and see. It, oh, there's no resolution oh. taped. I'll get that taped in and let you know when to refresh. Okay, refresh. 8.3, result of the Town of Swan River receive and approve the 2022 Emergency Measures Plan. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion, you had a chance to see the plan that is uh, in the document there. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Oh, sorry, Councillor White, do you have a question? You're not, we can't hear you. <clears throat> just, just a point, I know we talked about in another prior meeting that maybe we would do a tabletop exercise relative to choosing one of the, uh, the potential worst case scenarios. And I would encourage uh, Mr. Poole to keep that on his list somewhere. I know it's busy, it's crazy right now and there. But uh, I think we, we really need to go through a, a tabletop scenario where we look at, for example, the power is down and it's 40 below, where do we go, how do we get there? I think it's, to have all the players at the table would be a, a good thought. I Absolutely. Yeah, I believe in the document, it actually it, it requires us to do uh, those exercises. So we definitely will be doing uh, uh, <laughs> one or two of them in, in the next year. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed, it's carried. 8.4. Uh, this, sorry, this is just for council's information. Uh, I know that this has been uh, a contentious issue, the demolition of. Can we, maybe we'll just have that discussion in camera. We can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 8.5. Results the updated snow removal policy be approved. 
Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Um, this again, this is after uh, one of our call meetings and where it was made some proposals of some changes to uh, move some streets up to a higher priority and that included 3rd Avenue South and Elm Street. Right. The other addition was the, the liability from the windrow. People right. we advertised that the access uh, to their vehicles is the back lanes and the sidewalk accesses. Uh, it, it basically states that if they are to walk over the window, they do so at their own risk. Right. Okay. And I think that we had uh, some members of the community that were uh, had mentioned that they were very happy with some of the first grading that we had down the snow removal, and how the uh, the gate actually had not left as much uh, snow, if you want to say residue or or a trail of snow. Uh, it actually has been, the operator has been doing a, a really good job. So I wanted to throw that out there because we did receive some comments on how well uh, it was going along with this uh, new grader and, and uh, snow gate. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.6. Result of the Town of Swan River organizational chart be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Again, this is something that came out of one of our call meetings. Mr. Poole, is there anything that you want to brush on that at all? Uh, no, I'm just ha forward? happy that we have a plan going forward mm -hmm. and, and the council supported the direction that the administration has presented to them with our employees. Okay, thank our you. Client. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.7. Result of the fees schedule for 2022 be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Is there anything there to comment on at all? Uh, I know not Darren's everything not went up, but uh, nothing went up more than, I believe, 3%. Uh, there's just, you know, select the landfill rates, uh, some rec, the hall rates. Everything generally went up a few percent uh, in terms of development. Things stayed where they need, where they, where they have been. Right. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 9.1, result that $1,000 in fuel gift cards be purchased from Swan Valley Consumer Cooperative Limited and be given to the Swan Valley Citizens on Patrol Program. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Um, that's uh, on behalf of the COPP program, uh, we would like to thank the town of Swan River for their um, gift and... They haven't approved it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's this far, I'm assuming that that's what, uh, what we're doing, so um, I guess I should wait after the resolution. I'm just kidding. Go thank ahead. you for the uh, donation um, to our team. The team will be most grateful for that um, and I will reply to your uh, message Mr. Poole and what denominations um, for those gift cards um, and we'll be in discussion with that but on behalf of the COPP program we'll be extremely satisfied and pleased of the contributions from the town of Swan River. Thank you. Okay further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Now you'll receive your money. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 10.1. Resolve that accounts as follows, but hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 28300 to number 28362, totaling $119,756.56 as listed on Schedule A. Check number 28360, voided due to incorrect amount. 
Payroll accounts, checks number 4991 to 4997, totaling 87423 and 13 cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits in the amount of 32849 and 21 cents as per Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling 650 as listed on Schedule D. Direct deposits in the amount of 47329 and 55 cents as per Schedule E. Direct deposits in the amount of $277,601 as per Schedule F. Move by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Morio. Uh, just a, I guess, clarification on check number 28359, Swan Valley video services um, for that gardening video series. Uh, it's been there, or we've been paying amounts for a few months there now. Is that an ongoing thing, or how is that working? I think gardening is pretty much done now, so I'm not how that, like how is that arrangement was made up? I'm gonna defer. Mr. Fedorchuk? Director Fedorchuk, can you answer that? I have to have a check with uh, Lana and how that's being billed, but essentially I think it was every, after every video they would they would bill. It wasn't the total bill, so I'll just check with her. I'll be sure. Okay. Thanks. If you can uh, give that information to Councilor Morio and maybe send it to the rest of the, the team as well. Will do. Okay. Further discussion? Oh, uh, Mr. Uh, CFO Gidita, maybe he has a response there. I believe that this particular invoice was uh, a revision to the previous invoice that uh, I think there was maybe a calculation mistake or something that, that could stand to be corrected but, but I seem to recall seeing that somewhere that this was revising a previous invoice. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. So no uh, further discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2. Resolve that the business taxes be cancelled for the following roll numbers as business operations have ceased. Number 113 7500.300, $64.86. <coughs> Number 119160 $523. Move by. Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11? 11.1. 11 Result of bylaw 15 2021 being a bylaw to establish road improvement reserve fund be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Morio. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.2. Result of bylaw 16 2021 being a bylaw to establish a Lagoon Improvement Reserve Fund be read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3, result of bylaw 11, 2021, being a bylaw governing council and demonies be received and read a second time. Moved by. Okay. Um, move to table this until another. In two we weeks. don't have it on the table yet, so oh, okay. we'll bring it and then you can do that. Sure. Okay, so moved by Councilor Moore, uh, sorry, Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? I moved Councilor the table list for two weeks. Okay, so um, you need a seconder. So seconder to uh, move or table to the next uh, meeting. 
Do we have a seconder? Sure. Okay, Councilor Friesen. Okay, discussion? All in favor? Okay, so it's tabled. Where are we here? 11.4. Result of bylaw 11, 2021, being a bylaw governing. Oh, sorry. That's good. No sense in going that one. 11.5. Whereas the province of Manitoba has passed Bill 4, which repealed the Shops Regulation Act and the Retail Business Holiday Closing Act, except for Remembrance Day hours between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. And whereas Bill 4 amends the Municipal Act to allow municipalities to allow apply for their own restrictions through bylaw. Therefore, being resolved that the Town of Swan River, Bylaw 12, 2021, <coughs> being a bylaw to repeal Bylaw 25, 2017, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Explanation, please. Well, we this is an old bylaw that we had for keeping businesses at different hours on Sundays and all that. So now the province has a new legislation. So we're just removing this bylaw. Okay. Okay. For, for Sunday, Sunday as well as uh, stat holidays right. um, and general holidays. Okay. Okay. Discussion. All in favor. It's carried. Whereas the province of Manitoba has passed Bill 4, which repealed the Shops Regulation Act and the Retail Business Holiday Closing Act, except for Remembrance Day hours between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. And whereas Bill 4 amends the Municipal Act to allow municipalities to apply for their own restrictions to bylaw. Therefore, being resolved that the Town of Swan River Bylaw 12, 2021, being a bylaw to repeal Bylaw 25, 2017, be read a third time and passed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Recorded vote. All in favor? Carried as unanimous. Yeah. 13. Resolved that pursuant to sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We are discussing vaccine policy and also CBA negotiations as well as the, uh, the uh, document about uh, demolition. Moved by Deputy Councilor Morehill, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Result of this regular meeting of council, we now adjourn at 10.01 p.m. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.